polycystic ovaries um, is um, sort of a multi-symptom disease process. Um, and I think for, for many years was, was very misunderstood or underdiagnosed. Um, uh, the most common symptom of polycystic ovaries is irregular periods. Um, patients will skip periods for months at a time um, or weeks, um, you know, go into 45 days, beyond 45 days, three months, six months at a time, they'll skip periods. Um, and then when they have them, they can be um, fairly heavy. Um, it's also a disease process where we think insulin resistance um, plays a role. We see some abnormal um, hair growth. Um, we see um, some skin changes associated with it. We see acne. Um, so there's a, a variety of different um, symptoms that, that can present that might tip the patient off um, to recognizing that maybe there's a problem here. Um, certainly, if, if you're not ovulating and triggering a period, then it also can be difficult to attain a pregnancy because you certainly have less opportunities um, in a year's time period um, to, to get pregnant. Um, and it's estimated right now that upwards of 15% of women in the United States probably have some variety of, of polycystic ovaries. It's a large number. And I think that's consistent with what I see in my practice. Um, for the most part, um, you know, polycystic ovaries is not dangerous to people. Um, it's a problem that needs to be simply managed. Um, so if people have irregular periods and have some of these other symptoms, um, they should see their gynecologist um, and have a discussion about um, trying to determine what is the cause of, of their irregular periods. Kind of the old adage that, oh, I didn't get my period, I must have been stressed, is really not an accurate assessment of, of people's problems. Um, and so if people are regularly skipping periods, um, they should be seen by a physician. They should be evaluated. Um, because if left untreated over years and years, it is a problem that, that can give people some issues down the road, um, such as, you know, premature coronary artery disease. It can cause, you know, diabetes, um, or not cause diabetes, but it, it can be a pre, um, pre-symptom to someone who may develop diabetes. Um, and, and certainly um, endometrial cancer, if people go years and years and years without um, regulation of their cycles, um, it can promote the risk of endometrial cancer. And so it is a problem that should be managed, it should be evaluated, um, and then a discussion and understanding of the disease process between the patient and the physician. The treatment really is management of the ill effects of the disease process. So if one of the problems is um, that I have some insulin resistance, then certainly changing diet and exercise um, and weight loss um, can prolong or decrease the chance that someone might develop diabetes down the road. Um, the regulation of the cycles through a variety of medications um, can um, prevent um, the risk of, of endometrial cancer over time. Um, and so the treatments don't fix the problem necessarily. Um, the treatments really are designed to um, manage the problem so that people don't have long-term ill effects of it. Um, the, the easiest and best way to probably try to reverse some of the effects of polycystic ovaries is through good diet and weight loss.